The nice thing about learning the cardiovascular system on these models is that they're color-coded. Blue represents deoxygenated blood flow, red represents oxygenated blood flow. Another thing you can always keep in mind is that veins always bring blood to the heart. Arteries are carrying blood away from the heart. Just do not memorize it as all arteries carrying oxygenated blood and all veins carrying deoxygenated blood because guess what? Right now, I'm touching two separate arteries. And obviously, one is carrying oxygenated blood and one is carrying deoxygenated blood. Okay? Again, here, I'm touching veins. These red veins here in the lungs are carrying oxygenated blood. Now, most places in the body, yes, arteries are carrying oxygenated blood and veins are carrying deoxygenated blood, but do not memorize it like that because when you get to the lungs, you're going to mix things up, and I don't want that to happen for you. Now, here's where I'd like to start. Superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. This is bringing blood, deoxygenated blood, into the right atrium. Right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk, which splits into the pulmonary arteries. This would be the left pulmonary artery. This one here and this continuing into the right lung would be the right pulmonary artery. So the pulmonary arteries going into the lungs break down and get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller into the pulmonary arterioles. Same thing on this side. This is going to branch further and further into the pulmonary arterioles. This is deoxygenated blood going into the lungs, right side, left side. And we know what happens in the lungs. There's a gas exchange. So we drop off carbon dioxide, we pick up oxygen. Now we jump into these red lines here. These small ones would be the pulmonary venules. Again here, pulmonary venules. Those would eventually lead into the pulmonary veins. On the right side, we have a superior and an inferior pulmonary vein. On the left side, we have a superior and inferior pulmonary vein. These pulmonary veins, these four, are bringing oxygenated blood, again, from the right lung and from the left lung, into the left atrium. Left atrium, left ventricle, and then that oxygenated blood comes up and out the aorta. Now, at the top of the aorta, you can see one, two, three tubes coming off of this. Brachiocephalic, left common carotid, left subclavian. Let's start with this one here. Left subclavian does just what it says it's going to do. It goes under the clavicle. You can imagine your collarbone sitting right here. Subclavicular, subclavian, under the clavicle. Comes all the way down to this region here. This is your axillary region. Your, your axilla is your armpit. So we call this the left axillary artery. This one's going to continue the rest of the way down. Now I'm not going to follow it down on this model because if you notice, this is not an anatomical position. This has the radius and the ulna crossed. So I'm going to pick that up on the other side here. But before I get over there, let me work my way back to this middle one. So if this was left subclavian, this one's going to be left common carotid. And you can see left common carotid coming up to start to feed the head. In fact, if you check your pulse on the left side of your neck there, you're going to be feeling that bump, bump, bump in your neck. That's your common carotid artery. Here we have the brachiocephalic artery. Brachio meaning arm, cephalo meaning head. So sure enough, when we follow the brachiocephalic up, it's going to branch into your right subclavian, that's going to go under your clavicle, and your right common carotid artery. When you check your pulse in your neck, boom, 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 on the right side, that's what you're going to be feeling there, this red one here, your right common carotid artery. And again, this one here, your right subclavian artery. It's going to go under the clavicle. As we follow it down, we're going into the axillary region. This would be right axillary artery. We follow it all the way down here, past the humerus. So this is going to be your right brachial artery. And if we follow all the way down on this side, you'll notice that this side we are in anatomical position. The radius goes to the, the thumb. The ulna goes to the pinky. So what that means is this is going to be the right radial artery. This is going to be the right ulnar artery, 
and that's going to lead into the palmar arch. You can imagine this palmar arch going out and feeding your fingers from there. Now, as we come back here, you'll remember we have the aortic arch, and the aortic arch continues all the way down as the descending thoracic aorta. We call it the descending thoracic aorta because this is your thoracic region. You can even see the ribs right here, the thoracic cage, the ribs encompassing the lungs and the heart. So you, again, you do not see it, but the descending thoracic aorta would be right through here. This would then pass through the diaphragm. And as we come inferior to the diaphragm, we are now in the abdominal aorta. You can see the abdominal aorta branch off into the renal arteries going to the kidneys. You can also see it form this wishbone shaped structure. This is your common iliac artery, common iliac artery. In fact, on this left side here, if I follow this down, this would be the left femoral artery. You can see this traveling right next to the femur, the left femoral artery. If we continue this all the way down, it goes all the way down, let me pick it up on this side here, all the way down to the plantar arch. You can see the plantar arch is in the foot there. Now, when we bring blood back, blood's gotta come all the way back up, and now we're traveling, we've made a gas exchange, which is where we switch from red to blue, but now we're traveling back on the blue lines here. And in fact, this one right here is going to be the right great saphenous vein. Right great saphenous vein comes into the external iliac veins that's going to feed into this wishbone shaped structure in blue. This is draining the bottom side of your body. This is venous return coming right back up this inferior vena cava. We all know that this inferior vena cava is going to lead into the right atrium. A few more over on this side. As the blood is returning back from the hands, we get to the right median cubital vein. Coming back up like this, we are going to go to the right subclavian vein. The right subclavian vein is going to meet up with the internal jugular vein on the right side. So the right internal jugular and the right subclavian are going to make the right brachiocephalic vein. Again, right internal jugular, right subclavian, that makes our right brachiocephalic vein. We say the same thing mirrored here on the left. We have left subclavian vein. You can imagine this one coming from the arm like this. Left subclavian vein, left internal jugular vein. That's going to make our left brachiocephalic. So the right brachiocephalic vein and the left brachiocephalic vein come together, draining the top side of the body. That's the venous return that's coming to the superior vena cava, back to the right side of the heart. Again, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, into the right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk to the lungs, and we go through the whole thing again. And your left subclavian artery, that's what this red one is here. Again, you can imagine your, your, your right clavicle. Did I just say left? Shoot. 